Thank you, Carrie Aisley, for joining us. Uh, Happy this, to be here. So what is the difference between your improv background on a stage and doing improv on camera? What do I feel like is the biggest difference? Yeah, is that it? I mean, that you, it's more story driven or, um, you know, you're obviously on camera, you're not taking suggestions from an audience. Um, you know, yeah. you're, you know, you've got. I think story is a big part of it. Like when you're doing an improv uh, scene in a show, it's like, okay, get, you know, get a, a place and a, and a line and go. And you have three minutes and it's like, oh, I got to get the funny out so fast. That's why they're here. These people want to see us be funny. Like right. it's, there's, there's, it's so much pressure. I get really stuck in my head and I don't have time to get out. Like I just get too stuck. Whereas you're doing a TV show. It's like. All right, in this scene, this has to happen. You know each other. It doesn't have to all be funny. You're getting from A to B, but you have all this space in between to get there. It, it just, it feels so much more um, like you, you just, there's so much more that you, that I know what's going on and who I am. And, and it just feels more relaxed to me so that I can stuck in my head as much. And um, we're going to revisit your um, raw footage from Jesus people. Um, don't worry, it's really good. Um, <laughs> so let's think of uh, one of your early credits uh, on IMDb was Curb, your enthusiasm. So how did you land you such a, I mean, the so most good. enviable show? You, just drop by some yeah, you got a gift you dropped by. Hey, Melanie. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. What's going on? Ed. Hi. Well, we were just in the neighborhood oh. and thought we'd drop off your wedding gift. Um, it turned out the guy who played my husband, who I had just met, was a really nice guy, but I, I don't think he'd done a lot of improv. And I remember he told me, he was telling me he was a teacher and he knew Larry because his kids went to school with Larry's kids. And then cut to like 17, 16 years later, I was at my son's school and I see this guy and I said to my son, I was like, I know him from somewhere. And it turned out it was him. Oh, that's <laughs> so, right. And he was one of my son's teachers. So it was just like this weird full circle thing. That is. But, Thought we'd drop off your wedding gift. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's late. Congrats. Can't take your wedding. Yeah. Are you serious? Uh, no. We can't take a wedding gift now. No. We got married 14 months ago. You can't give a gift after a year. You know that. I I know that's why I, I'm sorry. You can't sorry, give a gift late. after a year, and, and what happens after a year? You just can't give it. Talk to me about the competing for competing for, you know, to interject yourself into a scene when you've got all these strong performers, which I'm sure you've been in many a time, but you know, you've got Larry. And of course in this scene, he's escalating the fight. He's getting louder and louder. Did you, did you have any clue that it was going to get that intense? You just can't give it. That's the cutoff. You can't give it? Well, you can give it's it with an apology. That's the cutoff? You guys, this is a beautiful bottle of we wine. We can't take it. It's you an afterthought, and it's late. We've just spent months. $300 on this bottle of wine I'm for you, sorry. you're not accepting it? Is that what you're saying to we me? We can't take the gift you, after yeah, a year. Yeah, no problem taking the $200 engagement vase. We got you. In improv, what do you do when it feels like everybody else is on a roll, and you're just kind of sitting there going, that, 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 that. can I get in? You know. It's really hard, and you have to... Uh, tell yourself that it's okay to listen because the more you listen, the more you have to work with. And it's okay to not always try to like make the joke. You know what I mean? If you can listen and have a conversation, it's often funnier than trying to hit a joke. Yeah, no problem with the shower gift. What'd you get her? The nightgown. The nightgown, that was okay. Then we flew to Chicago for your little wedding bash. Little. You know, you're into us now for about $5,500 as All I right. see it. First of yeah. all, it was not a little wedding. We had 266 oh, people sorry. there. Oh, sorry. And then why did you come? Why? Because she yeah. put a gun to my head, that's yeah. why. I don't right. believe you. Don't, do I don't you? believe that. Yeah. You came because you wanted to come. Oh, well, yeah, I was you desperate know, to you know, go to your wedding. Expensive. You shouldn't yeah. have come, Larry, okay? And I'm sorry that you can't accept a gift after 12 months, but you just can't. And it's the way okay. things they are. They don't want the wine. We're past the cutoff. We're sorry. sorry. You would do the same so, thing, Larry. Oh, I know we're... you would do the ha same thing. By the way, do you have anybody in there to clean up the mess that I'm about no, to make right no, now? No, no, you're being no, silly. No, you're being silly. Thank you. Next time, call. What is your advice to a non-improvised actor, which will be a lot of people in this this weekend that are going to attempt this? What what are some of your tips for um, pulling it off if you don't have a big background in it? It's funny because when uh, before I, when I knew we were going to talk, I asked myself the same question, and I was like, "What would I say?" And I think what's so important is to know who you are 
and what your relationship is with the person or people you're with. And from that, if you really know who you are and the character, because it's improv, you can easily get lost in like, like I've done improv where I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not my character anymore. Like this went off the rails. It went to a crazy place. But if you can stay who you are, what whoever that character is and have time beforehand to really think of who that character is. And Christopher Guest always did this. We would meet before we shot anything, sit in his office and he'd be like, tell me about your character. What's her name? And I came up with my name. Where is she from? What is she doing? We just had a dialogue so that when I walked out of his office, I was like, okay, I know who this person is. I can talk as this person. I know where she came from. I know what she does. Otherwise you can't improvise. You don't know who you are. And then you you see who you're with and you have that relationship and then you guys can do anything. Then you can come up with where you are, why you're there. But I think the most important thing is to know who you are and what your relationship is with the people you're with and to not, and this is hard because this is basically improv, improv is always funny, but not to try to be funny because then it yes. goes, then it can get to a crazy place and you lose the audience. You know, then it's like, just be earnest, just be yeah. really- be earnest and believe in who you are and yeah. be committed to that person. Right. And you could always, I mean, what you did in Jesus people. This is all we gave you in the script, literally one or two lines. Did you need something? No, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Good. Got a kitten. Oh, good. Good. All right. Um, Pastor telephone from a place called Name Withheld. So we gave you one joke. <laughs> and then you were like, and then he's like, huh? And then like, they're returning your call. And then he's like, I got to take that. So we wrote, we we knew that you were going to improvise. I mean, that, that was just like, this is the only thing that really needs to happen in the scene. But go off for three or four minutes and see what we have. You're welcome to join us if you want to. We're just brainstorming on ideas to push the music. I'm sorry? Hmm? We're just brainstorming here. I, I, did did you need to tell me something? So he, Joel McCrary, a very experienced improviser, he is constantly trying to bring it back to back, back on track. He's like, "Is there something that you needed?" So I guess the point being, like, somebody in the scene needs to kind of keep it on the rails. And so if somebody's exactly. being right. you're being abstract, and he knows that we've got to ultimately get to the point here. So he's just basically playing the straight man which in comedy is, you know, the person who's just trying to, he's not trying to get all the jokes. He's trying to actually let you be funny and, um, and let you be random. Hi. Hey, did you need something? I don't. Okay, good. I can see. So I think we'll, um, I did just get a kitten. Okay, okay, good. Just wanted to, I've been meaning to tell you. Right, okay, now remember we talked about focusing? Yeah. Okay, what did you come in here for? Talk to me a little bit about the need for, um, for, their, for a scene to have somebody who is bringing things back around. Well, you have, to, you have to always know where the scene's gonna go. So like in, in every outline for any kind of improv project I've done, this, the outline of each scene says it starts off here, then there's a huge fight. So and so storms off, and you decide to go have cake and, and a piece of co- you know and a cup of coffee. So you always know where you're going, and as long as the cast, as long as you get there, you know whether you be the straight person or the crazy person, everybody knows where they're going. Um, well, I want to tell you. I meant to tell you for the past week about the kitten. Okay, good. So I've been a little bit late. Right, Ellen, are you here because you wanted to meet across my heart the man? A little bit, yeah. Okay, I know you've seen all the pictures. Right, this is my secretary. This is Ellen. Hi. Hi. This is the band. Hi. Across my heart. I might go to Florida. Oh, that's nice. And? Oh, you have a phone call right now. Someone just called you. Okay, we got um, it. Okay. The company. Did you just take a message? Nope, they're waiting. And the company is called um, Unknown Caller, and they said... Unknown Callers. Caller. Yeah, and they're calling you back, and Caller. they're... Oh, they're waiting. Oh, oh, okay. okay. You know, um, it's a guy. It's hard when everybody's the crazy person. I mean, right. it's really you really need to have a, a not have a crazy person in order to help guide the scene in the right direction. Might be better. Hey, hey, Alan. How you doing? Great. Good, good, good. Um, did you need me? Just want to be quiet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shh. All right. Um, did you want something? I'm fine. I 
I rescued a bird. And, and just remind you that sometimes when you come in here, you get distracted and we go off on tangents and that's fine. We've said that that's fine. It's a safe place. I love this look on your face here because this is the look of an earnest character. Those big doughy eyes just looking innocent and fully believing in what they are saying. So when I'm talking to the students about being earnest in a scene, this is the look I'm talking about, being fully that person. I might go to Atlantic City. Maybe. Okay, okay, that's good, good information. But again, I'm gonna say the reason you came in here to see me was... Improv is very a very generous sport. Like You have to be generous. You have to be generous, right. Right, and so there are questions you must ask to draw more out of people. So what are some of those questions? I noticed at some point he goes, um, oh, uh, I think you said, I think I'm planning a trip to Atlantic City this weekend with my sister. Or something. Um, if I go to Atlantic City, it would be on a Monday. Okay, okay, that's fine. But I want you to go back in your mind. You're at your desk only three minutes ago. Starting. <laughs> and then, and then he, he goes, oh, they're, they're letting you back in or something like that or they're letting you come go back and then you're like well that was eight years ago i'll probably be back on tuesday in fact i'm definitely gonna go okay that's fine um are you allowed in atlantic city again that was over eight years ago which they said was fine okay so in other words you and joel had never discussed that in the past but as an improviser when you say you're going to Atlex in atlantic city he is doing the yes and he right. is Yes, you're going to Atlantic City, but I didn't realize that they're letting you back in. And then you are also going, well, yeah, but that's been eight years. So, you know, like. It's all just yes and, yes and, yes and. That's all it is. It's never right. shutting anybody down. But it's also the, 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 to get back to the generous thing, too, when you said that you have to be so generous. It's like you have to be willing to let the other person, if, if you're in a scene, all of a sudden you realize, uh-oh, this other person's being the crazy. You have to be willing to step back and not be the crazy. Okay, okay, good, good information. But again, I'm going to say the reason you came in here to see me was, fill in the blank. To tell you about the bird. Right, we did that. And... At least I love being the crazy, like, you know, but sometimes you got to be like, you know, I'm going to let that person be the crazy. And you ha you have to be able to do that or there's the scene just doesn't make any sense. An audience wants an audience wants the scene to make sense. Right. You know, they they don't mind the crazy, but you, they want it to make sense. Otherwise, it's like what? Who? No one's invested. No one cares, you know. Um, and then obviously you overshoot so much with um, improv comedy. So talk to me about just as, you know, as a as an actor, like, how much do you expect something's actually going to end up on screen? You know, if you've done a 10 minute take, are you thinking I'd be lucky if this ends up being? I mean, you, you never know. I mean, like the, I keep going back to the stuff I've done with Christopher Guest because there's like 80 hours of footage that that have to get into 90 minutes. So you, right. and there's scenes that never make it. Look. You have a phone call by the way. Okay, good. Who is it from? A company. A company? Did you take a message? They're on hold. They're on, okay. And there's the company called Unknown Caller. Unknown Caller. Yep. I don't know who that is. A guy. A and guy. he um, has a very scratchy voice. Like okay. Maybe. Um, but, um, so yeah, I mean, you just have to hope that it gets in. And then you'll, and when you're improvising, you're like, oh my God, that was such a great scene. We did 11 minutes of such great dialogue. It was so great. And then all the, you real, you watch it and one thing got in and you're like, oh, but I said this other really funny thing. Like, yeah, these cameramen are laughing and the four of the band members who are not on screen were over on the back of their heads. Do you have to stop and reset? Right. But I just wanted you to know that. I was a little bit late because when I finally went outside, when I hadn't showered or anything, bless you. I think the first time somebody laughed, you might have ad, um, ad libbed like a, a Gesundheit or like a God bless you, uh, trying to cover as if their laugh was a sneeze. I hadn't showered or anything, bless you. I went um, and the bird was um, almost dead okay. because a raccoon that climbs over my neighbor's fence. Anyway, I, I'm... So, I mean, unless, unless I'm breaking, you just kind of keep going and, you know, I mean, there's, it's like it's that. Like in this scene, you just kind of pause. Yeah, you would just kind of stop and the laughter would 
carry on. And then as soon as you heard it stop, then you would carry on with what you're saying. Oh, so then they just okay. fix it in editing? Just knowing the editor, the editor will remove those parts and, and get back to it. Yeah, well, I thought you had breakfast. Yeah, that was like eight hours ago. So you had breakfast at three in the morning? I told you the bird, right? Right. I, I got confused. Up, so. Okay, okay, but if you I were at your desk and you're starving. Right. And you suddenly say, I need to go find Pastor Jerry for what reason? If I go to Atlantic City, I'll be gone on a Monday. Right, right. You know it's unusable if they're laughing. I mean, you know, sometimes the camera's shaking, it's unusable. When I've worked with Chris Guest, there's an outline and it's literally like, okay, we ready? Action. Like there is nothing mm. said. It is no just direction up front. not at all. Like I have the outline at home. I better look at it, <laughs> you know, and then we get there and it's just, are you good? Are you good? All right, let's just go. Which is like, oh my God, like I could sweat bullets just thinking about it right now. Yeah. Cause it's so scary, but it's also so fresh and real. And, um, you know, sometimes there's one take. It's like um, this. There was a scene that got cut that I think is on YouTube with me and um, and Ricky Gervais. Um, Christmas or you know, um, a funeral, heaven forbid. And is Christmas a good time if I were to go? Would you say Christmas would be a good time to visit England? Oh, absolutely. Will you yeah. be there then? Uh, what to, to meet up? You mean or? <laughs> no, just to. <laughs> And it got cut because we couldn't get through it because we were both crying. And and as I would ask him stuff, Chris would say cut. He'd come over to me. I think he and he and Chris have their own little fun friendship. And he would whisper to me, ask that again. Like he wanted me to get okay. to Ricky and see how much I could break him. No, no, no. So that's really the only time that I, I ever got okay. fed anything. You know, again, with him, it would be the same thing. We're like, okay, that worked, do it again. Okay. I want you to say that same thing again. And, you know, but ne but no. never okay. was anything okay. ever planned out. Okay. Okay. Just again, the outline, it was just the outline. Okay. Now, isn't that a fun motivator in improv? Like just the very base okay. instinct to try to oh, crack okay. up the person. <laughs> it's almost like a sport, like you versus them. I mean, Kristen Sutton and I, when we did Campus Ladies, we barely could get through a scene because we would just, and then you get giddy if you're working and it's late at Where night and you just are like, let's just make each other laugh. Um, I mean, we, she in particular, even at the Groundlings, when we were in the Groundlings, there was a scene that she and I did and a sketch that we did. And I literally would have to look at each other with our eyes closed because if we opened them, we would just completely you break each other. So. Okay. It's okay. so fun. I mean, it's um, it's painful when you really need to get something done because then you want to laugh harder okay. and you really well, can't. Wait, let's keep going. We can do but this. But it is so, so fun. Do this. Do you know. ever talk with That's what I was saying. Okay. Ricky Gervais laugh. I mean, he's got such a boisterous um, laugh anyway, but like Ricky Gervais is kind of legendary in his own right, you know? But he's not an improviser. He's not, he's not oh, an yeah. improviser. Oh, yeah. So right. that, he's a writer. So he, yeah, and these people come on like campus ladies or, you know, we would have all these guests, these celebrity guests, and like Justin Long, who we were so excited to have. And he had never improvised. And he was like, you guys, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I've never improvised. I don't know how it's going to go. And he was hilarious. And I think it gives these people like Ricky Gervais or Justin Long the opportunity to do this exercise they've never done. And then like, oh my God, I really like this. I can say whatever I want, you know? And it was such a great scene and we were, and there was great information, but they couldn't use it. Like, and that, it's like a what a bummer and i really wanted to get through it so it's <clears throat> good start do you like england <laughs> okay do you, so do you miss england yeah I, I yeah i do yeah particularly you know um uh, when um i think of it <laughs> okay does everybody there have accents <laughs> let's do that. Let's do. Okay. Let's do that, and then you can do the do the talk. Okay. So, do you miss England? Sorry. You miss England. You miss living there, or do you, uh, you yeah. still live here? Oh. <laughs> like I kept saying, now I'm gonna do it. Like now right. I, I can do it. We're gonna do it. And Chris would be like, "Can you do it this time?" And be like, "I can do it. I can do it." And I couldn't do it. Every time I would try, I would like start crying, and then he would laugh, and I felt really bad. Like. 
time is everything. Here's this crew of people. It's 1030 at night. Everybody wants to go home. And I couldn't do it. So, you, right. it's, you know, I drove home thinking that was really fun. But what but that was so selfish, like, and then they lost the scene, they couldn't use the scene. Um, but yeah, Ricky, I was like, I was very intimidated with him because I think he's so funny. And that's what I'm wondering when you are being generous and you're allowing the other people to be the crazy, you know, the crazy is the funny. Um, so do you, do you have a memory of like where you're driving home and you're like, man, I didn't even get a chance to say one funny thing. Cause all I did was ser serve up, set up the other person. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, um, you know, I've driven home from many days working thinking that day sucked. I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything funny. And then um, I watched it like there was a scene in For Your Consideration that I had with John Michael Higgins, who I love and adore as a person and as an improviser. And the scene was um, and it might even been my first day there where I come up to him and he's just he was my boss. Miss Campanella, this publicity campaign is to be run with military precision. It is to be timely, quantifiable and oratund. Do you know what that means? No. I warn you, these are actors. In every actor, there lives a tiger, a pig, an ass and a nightingale. And he just any time anything that comes out of his mouth is hilarious. And I just basically was just listening and I was and I went home and I was like that. That, oh, well, he was hilarious, but okay, I have tomorrow. It's okay, it's okay. Don't make assumptions about the talent. Don't assume that the talent can hear well. Don't assume they know the plot of the film. Don't assume that they have living parents. Don't assume that they don't have a drop of Indian blood. Question, do I look like I have Indian blood? Not at all. Question, would it surprise you to learn that I am one-eighth mighty Choctaw? And then I watched it and I was like, it really worked. Like. He was feeding me this crazy information, but I was like, oh, my reactions worked. I don't have to be talking in order to right. get anything in there. And the and and it worked perfectly. So And you don't have to be loud. Like one my I think my favorite moment of yours in Curb Your Enthusiasm when Larry's yelling at you, I it's all very funny, but the there's a moment where he says, We even went to your small wedding. And I think I think he said small. And then you just said under your breath, small. Just like, it was like a, a total affront to you that he would label your wedding. Then we flew to Chicago for your little wedding bash. Little. As soon as you heard the adjective, you did not care for that. And you just muttered it. And to somebody, to the untrained eye, that might seem like the least of what you did in the scene. But to me, that was the funniest moment because it was just this little affront. Little. You know, it doesn't always have to be these big things. It can be these reactions. Yeah, and that was exactly what Michael gave me, uh, Michael Higgins, when we when we did that day. Like he was being generous in his own way, and I didn't realize it till I watched it. That giving me the gift of being able to react to his craziness mm -hmm. was fantastic. It was uh, it was great. It was a good lesson for me. Right, right. and and the, and reactions can be just as funny as as dialogue, and it worked. It just it it just it worked. So absolutely, uh, what would Bob Newhart's career be without reactions? I mean, right? Right. <laughs> All I think of when I think of him, I never think of him saying a funny joke. I think of him reacting to that phone call and reacting to the voice of God or reacting to the people coming into the inn on Newhart. And, and so quietly. And so, so quietly, earnestly. Like awkwardly, awkwardly quiet. Awkwardly quiet and earnest, like so committed to that. Yeah. <laughs> now, are, do you have go-to words? Do you ever find yourself in... Um, where you end up using words that you just know are funny words and that you've used more than once. But I like, have words that I use all the time and they're not funny and I don't know why they're always there. Like you, they're not funny at all. Like for some reason, I always say my sister's lawyer. I don't know why. It, ah. it, has, it has nothing to do with anything. My sister doesn't have a lawyer. Um, you know, I remember a lot of times saying my sister's lawyer is in Spain. Like, I don't know why I've never been to Spain. I don't know what it has to do but with that, anything. What, there is something funny about my sister's lawyer. In, in fact, in Jesus people, you said my uncle, um, you, I think you said, I'm going to go see my uncle, but then you added more to it. You said my uncle's wife. Well, we're going to be vacation. You're just going to go? We'll just go for the weekend. Right. Okay. I might, I might, I might go. Okay. Is that what... my, my uncle. Um, his wife might have to go there for. And I thought your uncle's wife. I mean, yeah. 
Would that be your aunt? But right. something about, I mean, uncle is funny. It's got the hard K in the center of the word. Um, uncle is a funnier uh, relative name than probably the rest of them. Um, uncles just in general can be creepy and weird and random. So it's funny right. to bring an uncle. It's funnier than saying my mother. Um, right. but, then, but then to take it the next step, See, I think a lot of people would just go, oh, I'm going to visit my uncle. But to say I'm going to, you know, my uncle's wife is just funnier because it's so like, oh, why didn't you say aunt? Right. And sometimes what's so stupid is so funny. But like, yeah, but I often say Samsonite. I don't know why I don't have the luggage. I don't have anything to do with. I don't know. There's like certain sounds and vowels that sound right together, but. Right. I don't, I don't know why, I, you know. And, and maybe talk about why the specific is so much more um, funny than the, um, because the specific is universal. So like saying Samsonite is so much funnier than saying I'm grabbing my luggage or I'm, you know, or, you know, uh, you know, why are brand names funny? Why are specifics? Like, why is it funnier to, to be, to be stoned on a Tuesday at, at 2.32 than it is to say I was stoned yesterday or I was, uh, you know, high yesterday, but you were high on Tuesday at 2.32 behind the dumpster. I mean, dump I think because people identify with the detail, you know yes. what I mean? It triggers something in them like, oh my God, Tuesday, I was once high on a Tuesday or yeah, I've got Samsonite in my closet by my front door, you know, whatever. I, I think, um, you know, I think details are funny. Like, and if people don't give details, and if you yourself are in a scene and you're a little bored with what they're saying, that's where you can be, quote unquote, generous and say, oh, you were high yesterday? Where? Right. So simple where, when, why, hows, you know, um, I think another thing improv I've seen a lot of you guys do from the groundlings is like you do like, um, oh, what do you mean? Like, give me an example. You know, oh it's like, I well, love setting up. Yes, yeah, I love setting up Tim Bagley. We've done um, some stuff at the Groundlings together where I'll be like, oh, wait, is that when you sang that song? Like, that's, you know, that's fun when you know somebody and you know, yes. you're setting up. I do that. Kristen and I would do that with each other all the time. Like, wait, how did that poem go, Cheryl? Like, you know, yeah, <laughs> or, you're, or you're like, oh, that was like during your hospitalization, right? And then the person has to come up with whatever thing hospitalized. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, well, you could see it as, being generous, you could also see it as just like jerking each other around. That's right. You yeah. can also see it as trying to make each other laugh and trying to almost stump each other in a corner to where they suddenly can't think of like what their disease is in the hospital. But that's exactly. it, right. You know, you're, you're just poking and prodding at right. each other. Yeah. And, and knowing that as you're driving home, that like that can be cut into something, you know, like it's mm -hmm. that can be right. shaped and molded into a into a solid scene. Yeah, they can take the best of those, you know, that that nine minute scene and make a great four minute scene. Yeah. Whereas wow. all the junk, they could throw it out. You're on stage. It's like, you better be good in this scene. Like, that's all there is. You know, we did Campus Ladies. And whenever we had time, every we would do a scene. And then uh, as long as we got it all, we'd say, OK, we'd always do a take where we could play. We're like, forget everything that was said. And now yeah. just do like. It gloves off, do anything you want. And often we would use a lot of that rather than sure. you know, what we thought we were going to use. You always got that like, as a last take, you got a take to display. Yeah. And there's something really freeing about that where sometimes the best material would come out, you know, you just got to get out of your head. It's like, it's hard to do that. That's why I think like do an hour of, of warmups and exercise and keep improvising and do dumb, silly games, like one word story or anything just to get, to get out of your head a little bit, play, roll on the ground, like whatever it is. What would be your advice? Uh, this will be my last question. What will be your advice for um, when people show up on set this weekend? And if they've got some time to connect with the other people in the scene, is it better not to overly discuss the scene should they focus on like who they are to each other, but not discuss specific lines? What would you say? I would say the relationship, the relate who they, like I said earlier, know who you are and know your relationship. You don't need to know what's going to happen in that scene, but if you know who you are and you know your relationship, you can do improvs, other improvs that aren't that scene with those people. You know, mm -hmm. if the scene's going to be them at a dinner party, you can just do some other fun improvs with them somewhere else, you know, just so they know each other, you know, how did they meet? Why, how do they know each other? What do they feel about each other? And who are they? 
um, I think is that any kind of exercise with that information coming out, I think is so helpful for the actual scene. For sure. Yeah, and this is a period piece. So this is 1978. It's not that far back, but um, you know, this is a parody of the Hardy Boy Nancy Drew Mysteries, which was a That's real terrible, hilarious. terrible late 70s show. Um, oh, you're gonna have so much fun! What a blast! Yeah. Oh, uh, this was so fun. It was great, great to see you. <laughs> great to see you again too. Yeah, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it, and thanks for still having the same Gmail address. Hey, no problem. <laughs>